Hello and welcome back to Let's Build Arendelle, the beautiful castle kingdom from the movie Disney's Frozen. Now last episode we went around the edge of the castle and we decorated the walls, not quite like the movie has them. We've got these weird kind of wall support sections with lights behind them because we think that looks a little bit better in our castle. And we're going to be moving away from how the movie builds the castle a little bit just to make it look nicer. Starting with this lighthouse, you can see here I've chiseled in some detail using stone bricks upside down and the right way up along the walls and the sides and the base of the tower itself. And now it's time to move inside the castle and I really wanted to add some detail to the inside of the main walls. Now when you look at the movie and when you watch certain scenes like Elsa running out of the Ice Palace um, I can't drop any spoilers because I'm assuming some of you might not have seen the movie, so check it out before I do. But yeah, when you see certain scenes inside the castle, you'll see that the walls aren't the same on the inside as they are on the outside. Now, that, that might be an illusion of the animation, and they might be different sets. But I'm going to try and keep as faithful as I can to the movie while still keeping a great build. And before I went on to the detail of the inside of the walls, I wanted to build some steps up towards the main gate. So I'm using slabs here, stone slabs, that start out like plain staircases, but then near the bottom they kind of expand out and spill out like a bunch of water spilling out over some concrete. Oh, now when I chiseled away at the wall, I revealed a whole bunch of creepy crawlies that have been hiding inside my walls, but I took care of those by setting the game mode to peaceful. And then I set about chiseling in some detail to these walls. Now when you look at the movie, these walls are held up by very clear pillars, but they're very open spaces inside that you can climb inside. And there are also staircases at the back that reach up to the top level of the wall. And since there's a door either side of the main door around the front of the castle, I assume that there's gonna be some way here that connects those doors to the inside of the castle. So I'll have to build a staircase going up to those double doors you see there in the middle of the screen. But yeah, as you can see, I've used chiseled stone brick, upside down and regular size up, stone brick steps, some wood as bracing and detail between the two levels of the wall section. But I've kept it so that the top level of the wall is still very much a balcony. And that chiseled stone brick connected texture effect with the pillars has really helped me achieve that. I've used stone brick steps on the tops of the balcony section around the fence posts. And I filled in the gaps with iron bars. Now I needed to look at the size and the foundations of the main castle house itself. Because this is a very careful building that we have to place correctly. If we get this wrong, the whole castle will look just ever so slightly different and wrong. So using black wool, I mapped out where the middle was and I began to cut away the corners and I was basically gonna pull the whole square, the whole oblong apart and then fill in the gaps. But I changed my mind halfway through and realized I needed to do a bit more thinking on how I was gonna place things. But I did at least cut the oblong along the, the long way, the long edge and expand it out to make a bigger shape in general. But before I come back to the foundations, I'm going to copy and paste the design that I have on this wall section all the way around the rest of the castle. We've got the motif and the pattern that we want around the rest of the walls, and it'll take some time to get everything pasted in correctly because all the walls are slightly different and slightly irregular in length and how they connect to the towers. But as you can see here, I've avoided that step for you guys, and here's the finished look with those glowstone blocks which are retextured to be kind of lanterns hanging down from wooden fence posts along the middle of those pillars and also I've copied that design around the other side the left of the front gate and the corner section at the front of the castle now I've, 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 I've held off from doing that design on all of the walls because I'm not sure if that's something I want to repeat on the, along the back of the castle but we also need to change the floor here. At the moment, we've just got regular stone. So I tried out a whole bunch of materials in replacement 
of the main floor. The first one being slabs. Looked okay, kind of cool, very simple to see where you are. Then I tried etched stone brick, and ugh, the top of these is really ugly. It looks kind of like cream. So we tried some mossy stone brick. Oh, that's a bit mossy. So we tried even mossier stone brick. Oh my god, that's really mossy. But we settled on just plain old double slabs. Now I came back to the front wall sections, and like I said, I wanted to connect up those doors that connect to the front gate with some stone steps. So you see me here putting in a motif, it's just a simple stone brick steps setup. But the whole section is held up by some wooden planks, some wooden fence posts, and some iron bars. And then I came around to these large staircases that reach all the way up to the top level of the wall section. Putting down a rough template of wooden planks, and then replacing those planks with wooden steps. When you're planning out something with a, with a kind of jaggedy slope, and you're going to use steps in the end, it's always best, I think, to map out a rough template with wooden blocks, and then go back and replace it with wooden steps. And here you can see the design mirrored over the other side. Looking pretty good so far. And you can also see those double slab floors along the bottom of the screen. Now it was time to come back to the front gate and take another look at how we've done these steps that connect us to the main gate. I put in some handrails so that people can get down those steps safely and to give it a bit more definition and chiseling out the detail. And I added in some simple lanterns so that people can see where they're going at night time. Now there are two fountains outside the main castle, the main house. So I wanted to map out roughly where I thought they'd go. Once I've mapped it out using, I think, green wool, I used some upside down stairs to create a kind of bowl effect, which I was going to fill with water and then build upwards to create a kind of fountain. But the water didn't do exactly what I wanted it to, so I had to modify that. And water can sometimes run in ways you don't expect it to. A great way to, uh, th there are mods that let you put down water blocks that won't flow. And often when you see complicated builds, um, that's what they've done. But what I'm doing is I'm just filling in the water sections that I don't want to be there with bricks. And then usually 90% of the time, when you break away those bricks, the water won't flow where it once did. Now, I remember seeing a large kind of circular structure on the southern side of the castle. And at first I thought it was connected to the castle, which it actually was. But then I thought it might have been the church. So I set down some rough templates for a small kind of very, very, uh, I guess, Middle Eastern style church before moving back onto the main castle. But when I looked at the church again, the church is actually a square structure and the circular building is connected to the castle. So I will be coming back to that and adding that circular tower to the castle. Now, getting things right as far as the main building goes was really complicated. I had to come back to the shape, and you see here I've just replaced the complicated shape we had in the middle with some rough oblong shapes that just get smaller and smaller. And that's because I've changed the way I'm going to do this. Instead of building from the ground up, I'm going to do the reverse with this building. I'm going to start high, building the roof, and then from the very peak of the highest point of the roof, I'm going to build downwards instead. And I think what that will do will help me better proportion the castle, and so I don't leave myself without room to build. Because if push comes to shove, and I get too low with the roofs, you can always just select the whole thing, copy it, cut it out, and paste it up just a few levels higher, and give myself artificially some more room to build. So I've built the main pyre at the start. This is the very highest peak of the castle. And it's just a large stone brick section with a giant blue spike on the top. Now the roofs are very very steep for this structure so I'm using, I'm, I'm thinking the spike that I've got for these roofs, the kind of incline is that I'll build four blocks down, I'll come out by one block and then I'll build another four blocks down and I'll keep doing that and that gives me a very very steep roof effect that you can see me here pasting in. But I think it's just about right. And there we go. I've made some serious progress on the roof, and I know exactly how we're going to build the house of the castle, the main building. We're going to come back next episode and finalise things, and get to work starting to build the main house. 
We're also going to repeat this cool design pattern we have on the inside of these walls and put that around the walls for the rest of the castle. Make sure everything's looking the same as everything else. And we're going to remove that weird template for the church we've put down, replace it with something more correct, and get building the church probably a couple of episodes away from now. But we're making serious progress and things are getting to look pretty nice. I've been Stjin and this has been Let's Build Arendelle. Hit like and favor and subscribe and I will see you next time for some more building. Take care.